up next, I, I want to invite some folks up that they have a very interesting story about developer experience. And it's not going to be your normal Cloud Foundry developer experience, but they are going to talk about how to use some of the Cloud Foundry technologies in a really unique and novel way. Um, so I'd like to invite Andy Rosequist and Holly Moody from Zipcar to come on on stage. Come on up. All right. Please, please. After you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Holly. Absolutely. So they walked here from their office. We did. <laughs> they walked here from their office. So I kind of teased it a little bit and said, um, you know, you're using something that's perhaps a little bit different than what most folks in the audience that's are true. using. Yeah, we love experimentation and different yeah. ideas. And so I want to hear about that. OK. I want to hear about that. So uh, the gist of it is that we essentially really liked uh, the Lattice project. Yeah. We said, you know what? Let's see if we can take that and actually run it at scale. Um, and so it came in at the right moment in our platform journey um, that it was what we needed in order to scale. And we were really focused on how can we enable developers to work with a large constellation of microservices at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and so Holly will get to some of that in a little bit. But first, I want to give a, a picture of sort of what our tech stack looks like. So this I have is, this. This is beautiful, by the way. Yeah. Probably the best slide of the day. I'm, I'm pretty yeah. excited about this. Yeah. Um, and every time I show this to, to my team, they're like, no, no, put another X on there, because we don't have that one either. Uh, <laughs> so we really love Concourse. We really love Bosch. And we love Diego and Garden. But we don't like the cloud controller. We don't like that stuff. And we rewrote our own. You have a different opinion. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so some of the folks yesterday were talking about you know, Kubernetes versus uh, Cloud Foundry in terms of Cloud Foundry has more opinions than Kubernetes. We're hyper opinionated um, in that sense. And so our sort of deployment orchestrator is all around Docker. And it's all around taking all of our services at the same time um, and letting engineers work on a few of them, but then orchestrating across multiple different deployments. So the, the facts that I like is we're running like 12 Bosch directors and 6,000 container instances uh, in multiple different clouds, uh, running three different, completely different products using about half of the same services in the middle. Very cool. So I mean, you, you mentioned hyper opinion. So, yeah. so let's talk more about that. Sure. Um, so we, in addition to all of the pieces that we love about Cloud Foundry, we also did a bunch of work to build our own SDK that exposes some of the uh, Diego primitives and some of these other bits directly into the application. And so mm. if you use our uh, internal SDK, you can get up and running and integrate it into this microservice mesh uh, within minutes of starting to write something. And it is already able to run in production mm. and deliver value. But that only works if you use our SDK exactly the right way. Um, and so we had to build a lot of uh, work in Concourse to make sure that all of the things are fitting together in the way that we want them to. And so we, I would say we abandoned a few of the factors of the 12-factor mm -hmm. model um, in I, order to. I like to think of them as there. inspirational yeah. or aspirational, right? Well, I mean, the aspirational stuff, like Holly can talk more about um, some of our continuous delivery maturity stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so it's wonderful to have the ability to uh, deploy stuff when you want to. But you've got to actually transform a team. And one of the things that we used is a tool called a CD maturity model. And you can find this out on the internet. We just took and lifted that and modified it uh, based on reviewing with the team and having them accept what they'd want mm -hmm. the maturity model to look like. And uh, it's basically a matrix that's a checklist. And it's got things across the. Um, uh, the horizontal axis uh, of the different stages with the target stage. And then on the, um, verti uh, the vertical axis, there are things like testing, um, data management, uh, culture. Um, Disaster recovery, yeah, all these well, pieces. Yep, yeah. yep, yep, service, service management. And, and so there's different you know, items there that you just sort of check off as you go. And if you get to the target area, then you're in pretty good shape. You're, and it has helped us to be able to uh, have the 100 plus developers deploy apps when they're ready to deploy. Right. So we develop it, we test it. There isn't a separate team. The whole team works together. And we push you know, an app out to production when it's ready to go. What was the process of kind of rolling that out through the, through the development teams? I mean, is it easy? Uh, it no. Change yeah. is never easy. No. Uh, it's just 
we just started it. Um, you, you build a few, you know, a few champions that believe in it. Uh, we as a team, a Zipcar team, have uh, an, still a, um, a legacy architecture that is very painful. And so there was motivation to try and transform into something better. And so I think that that's been the biggest thing is being able to have that motivation into, to transform into something better. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So one of, the, one of the things that both of you have talked about is um, uh, how Zipcar is kind of like a, a, well, you're part of a larger corporation. That's true. Tell us a little bit about that. And, and this whole multi-cloud buzzword exactly. thing has something to do with it. Yeah, so we wanted to be able to operate, to continue to operate like a startup. So um, Zipcar has been around um, since 2000, 2001, mm -hmm. um, and we were acquired by Avis Budget Group in 2013. But we've still maintained a lot of independence in how Zipcar, the business, works. And so we've always been an agile organization. We've always been doing uh, that type of software development. And then colliding a bit in different ways with uh, parts of Avis Budget, we've sure. been able to help demonstrate Wait, like opportunities for future for our larger parent organization, and as well as take on projects that really fit well with the kind of culture and tech that we've built. And so, by using uh, Bosch at our underlayer, we're able to portably move our workloads depending on what kinds of whether it's uh, regions of the world that we need to support or whether it's uh, contracts that we found, oh, it's really cheap if you can run in this cloud. Okay, well, let's figure out how to do that. Um, so what I, the story that I like to tell is that there was a point when we, ha we were running in three different VMware environments and one of them was really bad. And I won't shame why, but uh, it took us two weeks from the point that we said, you know, this is so bad, we need to get out of it. We moved an entire production stack into AWS and we're up and running. Um, thanks to Bosch and then building everything right up. Yeah. yeah so last, last night you were talking a little bit about um, one of your troubleshooting techniques. Yeah. Uh, sometimes when easily like the f second or third option that we do is eh, just burn the whole thing down and rebuild it. Give it half an hour and then everything's better. <laughs> and redeploy all you know, 50, 60 services, redeploy all of the cells, just everything. It's sort of like when you call up a help desk and you know, they say, well, have you tried turning it off and back on again? Exactly, We're like, just reboot the whole dev environment. It'll be fine. <laughs> That's really interesting. It's really interesting. Um, so, so I actually kind of wanted to dig in just a little bit more into the, the idea of this, you know, this hyper opinion. Because um, I, you know, I brought you up, I was talking about how developer productivity is, is sort of the general theme of the Cloud Foundry ecosystem. Yep, right? We're sure. very focused on developers, and, and the fact that you're hyper-opinionated is, is interesting. Now, it's going to be specific to Zipcar. Exactly. Um, how does that play out? I mean, what's the process of a new developer coming in and learning what opinions they're supposed to have play out? Yeah, so, so um, I think that as a team, we pull people onto a team and collaborate. Uh, there's a lot of pairing that goes on. Yeah. Um, but as far as you know, sort of developer productivity and, and ease within our environment, we have a couple of tools that were built up. Um, one primarily is the ability for a developer to work locally on an app mm -hmm. and be able to debug it. But because it's a microservice architecture, you have to connect to a bunch of different um, yeah. uh, microservices. And so this, this part of our, our, we call it a Savannah yep. architecture, um, is able to, you are able to start up your app locally, debug it locally against services that are de deployed in a, in a Savannah instance somewhere else. Very neat. And uh, so, so just so we're clear, Savannah is the, uh, the aggregate kind of platform. Yeah, so uh, Savannah is essentially our replacement for the cloud controller and sure. the CF CLI. So we have a Savannah uh, CLI called SAV, and uh -huh. we have a Savannah API that um, basically fulfills the role of the cloud controller. Uh -huh. And one of, the, one of the opinions we have is that all of our RPC between uh, microservices goes over messaging queues. And so because we have this messaging queue that allows all of the RPC to happen, um, in a developer environment, you can tear down the sort of data center hosted instance of the app that you're working on and connect your own laptop into the message queue that that yep. instance was running in yep. so that your teammates can then go and browse to the thing that's running on your laptop via the data center and get all of the other 50 services running there. So you don't need 50 services running on your laptop and you don't need to build yeah. uh, you know, the smaller mocks there. You can say, you know what, I'm just gonna connect into all of them and get a full suite of everything that's running exactly as yep. it is in production, but just my thing is different. You know, that, I think that's the reality of, um, of microservices architecture, like it, it, it's, 
it both really powerful, but also kind of make things a little bit more complicated, right? You have yep. to think about more moving parts and we need the right tooling in place. Yep. Um, so it's fascinating to hear about that. Yeah, uh, and that's actually part of what the uh, um, C CD maturity model was yep. about, was you know what kinds of things you have to put in place. And testing is a very large piece of that. In order to deploy something reliably out to production, You've got to have multiple layers of testing, and the CD maturity model talks to a lot of that, also to the infrastructure as you know, as, as software, which allows Andy yep. to do what he's talking about, um, burn it down, start it up again. Um, but testing, and I wanted to talk about, you know, I talked about the developer testing, but there's one other kind of testing that sure. we do to validate that our apps are viable out in production, and that's called journey testing. And we actually run these tests out in production. And the idea of these particular tests are to um, validate your, you know, your primary money-making paths. So you don't test yeah, everything. You're actually doing business as Zipcar, right? Right. Is that, and, yeah. and so you want, you know, you want to be able to validate that your your production architecture is is running for your users, and you want to find a, a problem before your users find it. So we have these things called journey tests that run every 10 minutes, and uh, you know, let us know if there's a problem out in production. That's really neat. That's and they're cool. orchestrated by Concourse, because we love Concourse. Yes. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so th this, this is really, um, has been a fascinating story to hear, um, hear about, it, in particular for me, because uh, it's a bit inspiring about how you're using components of the architecture. You're achieving very similar goals to most of the organizations here. Yep. You just happen to have a hyper-opinion, you know, hyper-opinionated approach. Um, but we're really happy as a community that Zipcar is getting some value out of the, the Cloud Foundry software. Yeah, so absolutely. I want to thank you both very much for coming. Well, so if you want to hear more about what we're doing, yeah. yes. um, so 1205, I think it is, concourse all of the things at all of the times, um, is our quality engineering manager talking about how, the way that I put it is that how we achieve a CF push-like experience, mm -hmm. but using concourse mm -hmm. to build containers that we then run in Diego. Very neat, yeah. very neat. Well, thanks again. Absolutely. Really appreciate you both right. coming. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. how about a round of applause? Holly, Absolutely. Andy, thank you so much thank you for coming. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah.